Okay squad, welcome back. Now in this video, we're gonna be looking at creating tracks and channel strips in Ableton Live. Now, hopefully you have already seen the first two parts of this series where I cover the same topic in Logic Pro X and Pro Tools. If you haven't, then links will be on the screen at some point and you'll be able to jump straight there and check those out. Anyway, let's get straight into this. Okay, so we're now in the Ableton Live environment and working in this platform is somewhat different to working in Logic and Pro Tools. And you'll see that in my previous comparison videos across all three doors. Track wise, how do we create tracks and how do we use tracks in Ableton? Now, first of all, we're using the same song, 1985. Let me play that back. Okay, and we're looking at arrangement view at the moment. And if you remember, I touched on this before, we have two views. We have arrangement view, which is what we're looking at now. And we have session view, which is this one. I've imported all of my stems directly into session view. These are all audio recordings. How do we create tracks? Well, it's very simple in Ableton. You come up to create and you have one, two, three track options that you can create essentially creating an audio track is real simple you can use a key command command t or simply click here to insert a track and here's our new track just down here so i'm just going to move this to the top of the screen okay so here's our new track we can crunch it down like so and i can now import audio into this audio track i can record vocals directly into there or any sort of instrument and it's that simple. Track parameters are over here. This enables a track or disables it. Um, solo, record enable. There's the pan control at the moment. It's center. You know, you can adjust that there. And here's your volume control. To re reset on this, it's delete. And that's it really. I mean, it's, it's real simple. Okay, so let's just import a bit of audio into this track. So I'm just gonna bring in some congas. I'm gonna search up here congas okay and i'm just going to bring this in here drop this onto the track right like so i'm actually going to solo this and we're going to play back from here okay and it's that simple i can then press the tab key on the keyboard and right here here's our audio track bring the volume down a touch and this sits neatly at the top of our mixer and of course we can create tracks in either arrangement view or session view so we're now in session view if i was to come here again and i was to hit insert audio track a new audio track appears right here okay let's undo that and now the other type of track that we can create is a midi track so i'm going to insert midi track right here there we go straight away we get a midi track i'm just going to pull that back to the top if we flip back to arrangement view we'll see our new MIDI track here. Let's focus over here for a second, clear this. And with MIDI tracks, we can now insert instruments. So let's say, for example, I wanted to insert a software instrument, a bass sound or something. I can select the type of bass sound I wanna go for. So let's audition this. All right, I'm just gonna go for something real simple. Let's drag this over and drop it onto the track. And now, this track has now been armed with this, this particular sound. If I was to go back to arrangement view, you can see it's loaded up in here and uh, it's ready for programming. Okay, again, track parameters are real basic, real simple, like so, crunch it down. Okay, that's ready for recording. The other thing about MIDI tracks, which is useful to know, although we can insert software instruments into a MIDI track, we can also use the insert MIDI track option. If we want to connect our external MIDI devices, I've created a new MIDI track right here. Let's close this one. Okay, so this is the new one. And all I need to do is go back to instruments and look here in this list, external instrument. Okay, if I was to drag this onto here, this is now set up for an external MIDI instrument. And as you can see down here, I can set my MIDI interface. So however, I'm gonna be connecting my external MIDI device, whether it be by USB or some other means, uh, you can set it up in here. Unlike Logic where you've got software instrument tracks and external 
MIDI tracks. Ableton is a bit simpler where you just insert a MIDI track and you can decide whether you're going to use it as a software instrument or as an external MIDI track. So at the bottom of the arrangement, we've got the reverb track, delay track and return track as well as our master. What we can do right now is we can go up here and insert a return track. And as you can see right here, we've created a new return track. And if we go to our mixer, we'll now see send D has been created. Let's create another one. Let's insert return track. And now you can see send E has been created. And this is useful if you want to add additional sends. If say, for example, you wanted to have a different reverb on return C or a different type of delay on D and E, you can then set these up here and then from your audio tracks or your or your MIDI tracks, you can send those signals through to the auxiliaries or the return tracks, okay? So we're back here in arrangement view. And now I want to group my drums together. I can actually create a group track. So if I select the first drum track and I hold down the shift key and I come down like so until I get to, um, yeah, Let's put chimes in as well. Okay, now I'm going to right click right here and come down to group tracks. The uh, key command is command G to group tracks together. And right here now, as you can see, I've got my new group. Command R is to rename. So I'm going to call that drums. Again, that saves me a whole lot of space on the screen. So now that I've grouped all of my drums together, let's play back the song and then I'll solo the drums and you can actually hear what's going on. So let's play from about here. So it's really, really quick and easy to create a drum group um, using the group tracks function. Let's go back to session view. Right here you can see the drums group track. If I, I can extend it by going like so, clicking on that, and you can see this sort of folder contains all of my drum tracks in there. Now, what's handy as well is if I was to play back, solo this, I can control all of my drums with the drum group fader. another handy function within Ableton Live. Now the other thing I want to show you real quick is how to insert effects into an Ableton track. I mean we've covered this in previous videos but I'll show you real quick. So we're looking at our drum group right here and let's say for example I wanted to insert a compressor. I'll go to effects, I'll go to compressor right here and classical compressor, drag, drop, onto the track and now the overall drum track will benefit from a compressor. Okay and if I was to say add one more effect, say it was a limiter for example, let's pick upper ceiling. This is just really random. We could just drop it just after the compressor in the chain. And I could swap these around if I wanted to. So pull this over here, drop this over here. So now it hits the limiter first and then the compressor. But you can rearrange things very easily all on the drum group track. And you can do exactly the same process on any of your audio tracks or your software instrument MIDI tracks. Okay, now uh, that's real simple. And hopefully that makes sense to you. Now, because we've got lots of tracks right here, the window is doesn't display everything in one go. So you just need to scroll along here to see uh, the tracks that are hidden. So if we were to close this down like so, the other thing we can do is just to create a bit more real estate on the screen, we can close this or browser window. These are your returns. So we can just hide the returns. And right over here, we've still got our master channel, which is always displayed when you're in session view and the same applies over here in arrangement view we can display the return tracks or auxiliary tracks hide or display them as well as the master track one final thing here on session view you could always crunch these down a little bit so you can actually make them a lot smaller so you can try and fit more on the screen so just just hover over the edge right there let's close this in a bit and 
you can make these smaller. Okay, so you're able to fit a lot more on the screen, customize the screen to a view that really suits you. Okay, so this was the last video in this three part comparison series. However, I'm going to be doing more videos comparing Logic Pro X, Pro Tools and Ableton Live. I'm creating another series right now, which will be out very, very soon. Remember, your feedback is so important. And don't forget to like and subscribe as well, because that's a great guide as to how effective these videos are. And make sure you switch on your notification bell so I can inform you of my next video when it drops. And until next time, you take good care. I'm Dr. Deuce. Peace.